Beloved, you are listening to Grace Life Komi Podcast, a platform commissioned by God to raise men into completeness in Christ Jesus. We believe that you will be blessed beyond measure as you give yourself wholly to this divinely inspired teaching. Through God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. Grace to you. Jesus is Lord. Welcome back. first and the last Adam brought forth their wife respectively from their side by the aid of a rib. So first Adam, last Adam brought forth their wife from their side by the aid of a rib. So the side important, the rib important. That was the best command of the, of the, of the first and the last Adam. Praise God forevermore. To Jesus. Now, why the ribs? Why the ribs? What is so particular about the ribs? Why the ribs? Why the ribs? Why the ribs? I believe this is the question that should not be going to our heart. Is that also why the ribs? First Adam, last Adam, side, aid of the rib. Why the side? Why the rib? All right. From biological and physiological point of view, um, I'm not a medical doctor, a man, but when you have to go into these kind of things, you just have to study a little of what they have to say. And when I've seen some kind of medical tests, I say, yeah, this one is not my own. You see, um, that's why I like the teaching ministry. It will help you to enter some areas. You can learn small thing here, small thing there, and you are good to go. All right. From the biological and physiological point of view, ribs play a very important role in the human body. Their main function is to, number one, aid respiration. Aid respiration. I will explain something to us. Now, the, the lungs, they are in the rib cage, and it's said that when they expand, because breathing is expansion, a reduction of the lungs. When they expand and they reduce, the it's also um, the, 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 the the ribs help to protect them. And I, I, I also um, studied that um, the ribs actually kind of expand and reduce too during that process. And so they actually aid respiration in the sense that without the lungs, without them protect, protecting the lungs, without them expanding and reducing as to the lungs expansion and reduction respiration is not possible praise god forevermore hallelujah to jesus um, in fact the, um, you know that in the bible when um, jesus his bones were not broken the other two things their bones were broken why the reason why their bones were broken was that they, their legs the bones their legs were the support for them on the cross now so before by right, according to the Jewish law, a crucifixion, because they were, the Romans were in a Jewish location, the crucifixion was to be ended before the Sabbath. You are not supposed to do anything of such during the Shabbat. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, it's actually um, in the uh, uh, Jewish uh, uh, timing there, the, the, um, the new day actually be, began from 6 p.m. Praise God forevermore. That was why before then they had to end up the crucifixion of Jesus. So Friday and um, 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 Sabbath began from Friday evening. From Friday evening. Because the many people um, argue how you say Jesus resurrected on the third day and he was crucified on Good Friday as they say and then Saturday and what third, third day is not um, he, he, he did not stay in the grave for three days. Uh, Monday should have been a day. What? By 6 p.m., Shabbat has begun to calculate it. Are you getting what I'm saying? All right. So they were meant to terminate everything about their crucifixion for the respect of the Jewish law and Jewish practice before Shabbat began. So why those things were still alive? They had to make sure they die. So what they do? They break their bones. When they break their leg bones, their, their leg can no longer support them to breathe. So they collapse on their lungs. And as they collapse on their lungs, the 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 rib cage can no longer expand for the lungs 
and contract for the lungs to successfully breathe and so what happens it chokes the lungs to death and the people the, the people die i hear what i'm saying so it was very important for respiration the ribs are very important for respiration and that's why jesus his bones were not broken why because he was not to die of by, by suffocation he was to die by death by giving birth which was the rupture that which we led yesterday he was not to die by suffocation why because there is the spirit of man and the breath of the almighty give him understanding he gave up the goods he gave the breath out he is not to die by people making him lose his breath it's, that's why when Pilate told him, he said, you know, I, 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 can, I can take your life. He said, no, 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 stop there, sir. I have the power both to take my, to lay my life and to put it down. Why? And God breathed into Adam the breath of life and he became a living. So he knew that the breath he was living was Neshama. It was not given to him by man. And so no man has the right to take that breath from him. Not even on the cross do they have the right to take it from him. So from he told Pilate from the beginning, you cannot take it. I take it, I, I, I lay it down, I pick it up. You can't take it from me. So that his bones not be broken was not just a prophetic word concerning him being made, it was a prophetic word to make them understand that nobody can take bread from him because God gave the bread and he owns the right to the bread to either give it or to, to what? Keep it. But those who were not in his category, they took their bread from them. See, this is why we are still emphasizing on the new creature life because this understanding you know when a man of god his family was attacked he came online he came online and he said no mortal man can take my life from me people don't understand such statements that you see people bragging and talking all manner of things you don't see it's a revelation of the spirit life that can make you talk like jesus said i have the power both to live my life and to pick it up when i want to go when i want to stop if I don't want to stop breathing, you cannot make me stop breathing. That's why they could not break his bones. <laughs> right, let me not say that because that could be another line on his own again. This spirit life is too important. It's too important. Very important. It's too important. It's just too important. It's just too important. Nice no once, once I was on a journey. That was like how many years ago? my 20s and i was in the car with a lady but there was a lady by the side there and she was just you know we're talking and she told me oh i was i was dressed in my suit going for an official assignment and she told me she said that ah, i just remind her of what in some days ago she was traveling there was a a a, a, bus, a bus who she saw that and she saw that they had an accident the bus had an accident and many people died and there was a man who was just sitting by the door side he was just dressed like me and he died i said hey stop it I can't die in an accident. It's not possible. I'm unkillable. We know agents of darkness when they're talking fast. I shut her up and I hushed her. It's not possible. Hey, spirit life. Spirit life. We control breath. <laughs> the spirit life controls death. The spirit life controls death. Where is it going to be? It's not a big thing. Spirit life controls breath. Let me read from there, please. So the ribs, the main function of the ribs is to aid respiration. Number two, it protects the contents of the thoracic cavity and mediastinum. And medical doctors will know that we'll be able to pronounce this word there. So you see, the thoracic cavity is, is from like the the the, the shoulder d- uh, down to like you know a bit above the stomach. That's the thoracic cavity, and there are organs there. You have the you have the lungs. The, the heart, the uh, diagraph, and everything else. So the ribs protect this. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the rib is a protector. Is a protector. And that's the reason why those who even fight boxing, you see that they, 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 some of them, they, when they are uh, um, protecting themselves, they even say allow, they can uh, protect and say allow for the ribs to be punched. If the ribs are punched, it will not affect, it will not go straight into the organs. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. But if there were no ribs, you punch the side. Long. It's punched off. Um, um there was a particular footballer who broke, I think, two of his ribs. <laughs> broke two of his ribs. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we see people who they say they remove their ribs because they want to look like whatever. You're messed up. You don't understand. God put it there for protection. Are you getting what I'm saying? Alright. Now um 
Number two, it provides a place where some muscles originate or attach. So ribs provide a position where muscles can originate from, where muscles can attach. They can attach themselves. And so ribs will look like so muscle muscles origination and then it plays a role in erythropiosis during development. Medical science people know all this. I just brought this out so that those in medical science can be saying yes, we understand, so they can understand it better than some of us. <laughs> I don't know how medical science. Praise God forevermore. Now, but if you look at these four importance of ribs, you discover that these delicate organs, ribs play a very important role there. Now, without ribs, inhalation and exhalation is not possible. That means death is imminent when the ribs are not there. We just saw that in the crucifixion exercise. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. And imagine no ribs, and in the boxing, somebody just box. The opponent by the side. He just pokes out the the organs. <laughs> That's all. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, minus box himself. Something sometimes we just hit our side. You get it? Imagine you hit your side by mistake and no ribs. You see what happens? Praise God forevermore. Now these are the functions. You see, these um, ribs basically are the side. So we're talking about the side here. Yeah. We're talking about the rib protection for the body, the body organs. So not, not just the rib, but also looking at the whole side, what the rib cage at the right side, what it does, and the rib cage at the left side, what it does, this protection it does, this um, respiration it does for us. Imagine without ribs, how will we be? How will we be? How will we be? Please God forever more. Now, these are the functions of the woman to the man as his helpmate. Are you together? Because she was taken from his side, from his rib. Are you get what I'm saying? That's why God said, I'll make a helpmate for him. And was actually said, I will make I will make a being that will do what? That will eat his respiration in life. I will make a, I will make a being that will protect the content of his thoracic cavity and I will create a being that will provide a place where some muscles originate or attach in his life. I will create a being that will play a role in erythropiosis during development. I'm creating a being that will do all of this for him. Life could not do that. Good could not do that. And he likes, the list goes on. They couldn't do that. It was only this being that was created from his side that can carry out this function. That is why she is the help that is meat for him. Any other help is no meat for him. Are we together? Yeah. You see, this is the reason why when people don't understand the place of a, a help meat in your life, it is better for you to live without one. It is better for you to not get started at all. Are you getting me? Yeah, the better for you not to get started looking for a help meet at all if you don't understand the place of a help meet in your life. If you understand the place, then you can now. That's where it starts from. How we together? I always knew I would need a help meet, so I started looking for one from childhood. Praise God forevermore. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Okay. And this was why Eve was taken from the rib or from the side of Adam. Um, what do you call it? Marital crisis comes when people don't know the purpose, when a man does not know the purpose of a helmet. And when a woman does not know her purpose as a helmet, there's marital crisis. When the man knows the purpose of a helmet, and when the woman knows her purpose as a helmet, there is no crisis whatsoever. There's no crisis. So we always say you need to know this purpose before you start looking for I can say Alright, praise God. Now, so, this is very important because um, we can see in the church today, there's a lot of challenge with marriage, 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 everywhere you go, marriage, 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 marriage. When purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. When you as a man don't know that this helpmate, this is what she's to do for you, and you as a helpmate don't know that this is what you have to do for the man, you discover that you will begin to assume different purposes for yourselves. See, what is the role of the woman? The role of the woman is to wash my clothes. The role of the woman is to sweep the house. The role of the woman is to take care of the children. The role of the woman is to keep it. Is this, do we see that in aid respiration? 
<laughs> I get what I'm saying. Rule of the world. You see, and we have we have been able to define life and give ourselves rules. But you see, marriage is not built. The woman was not built for a rule. The woman was built for a purpose. And the woman was not given to the man for a rule. The woman was given to the man for a purpose. So we are to marry on the grounds of purpose, not on the grounds of rules. And if rules become the purpose of marriage, we begin to share rules and very soon become one of one, one of the in economics and in, in, in secondary school has taught that one of the um, um, disadvantages of monony, monotony of labor is what? Boredom. <laughs> is that also? <laughs> you engage in monotony of labor. Yes, it has an advantage. An advantage is that you become you become expert in it. But after a while, you become bored of doing it. When marriage is built on rule, it will end up in monotony of labor, which will end up in boredom. Because both of them will now become bored of carrying out their role. The man okay as a man and to have to provide goodies, as a woman and to provide this. So you you get the point that you must side be the one always providing cookies. It's not possible to always provide this. Okay, I'm tired. Oh, you get the point you begin to say, this thing is getting boring. But when purpose is the basis for a marriage, when there is purpose, when I need aid in respiration, it may be in providing cookies as a man. I cannot provide cookies and I need to breathe. The woman can provide at that time. What is most important is that when I cannot breathe, let her help my respiration. Are you going to say, when I need my, my, my thoracic region to be um, protected, let her protect. But you say, no, it is based on rule. Then I am carrying out the rule and before I know I cannot breathe again. I can't breathe, I can't breathe. She said, no, it's your rule, it's your rule. I can't breathe, it's your rule. <laughs> I die before my time. You say, I can't. Ma- Don't you see that? The way I've been carrying out this rule, my ribs are moving one after the other. If my lungs are getting this way, say, it's your rule, it's your rule. So before I know yeah. I get exposed and I cannot breathe, I cannot uh, protect myself again. Beloved, we will like to introduce to you one of our latest book releases. Titled, Blessed Beyond Measure, authored by Chimdi Ohahuna, the prophet Habakkuk prophesied in Habakkuk 2 verse 14 for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. This prophecy plays a pivotal role in the program of God for the earth and his children. In addition to this prophecy, Jesus said in Matthew 24 verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. This makes us understand how indispensable the acquisition of the knowledge of God and his operations is for all who seek to be involved in the fulfillment of prophecies. Given this, God has availed simple yet profound timely knowledge via his servant Shimdi Ohahuna, to all who seek to partner with God in the fulfillment of these end-time prophecies. The book of Zechariah 1 verse 17b says this saith the Lord of hosts, my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. Also by analogy, in the book of Matthew 5 verse 14, Christ Jesus called his disciples the light of the world and a city set on a hill. This implies that children of God who are lights of the world and cities set on a hill that cannot be hid can only spread abroad through prosperity. Hence, prosperity is indispensable in the life of every born-again child of God, seeking to spread abroad, shining the light of God, as a city set on the hill, thereby, partnering with God in the fulfillment of prophecy. Blessed Beyond Measure is a must-read, for every believer who desires to know prosperity, in the complete way, as designed by God. This book helps to clear the gray areas, misconceptions, and misunderstandings on prosperity, suffered by many saints, over the years, in the body of Christ. By systematically examining, the origin of the blessing and salvation. Order a copy today via Amazon. Purpose must be the basis. And that's why, when this is understood, a woman is not defined by rule. A woman is defined by purpose. So she can switch rules just to fulfill purpose. It's not a marriage seminar. I don't do marriage seminar. I don't do relationship talk. Amen. It's maybe I'm teaching and it ain't come like that. Come. <laughs> so she can switch rule to fulfill purpose. When to fulfill purpose. That's what makes successful marriages. She can protect her man just to fulfill purpose. That's what makes successful marriages. Alright. Let me be fair. It's not marriage seminar. When they want to marry seminar, they should call for marriage seminar. 
Alright. Now these are the functions of the receiver gifts. Now the new creation was not made from the rib of Jesus. Eve was made from the rib of Adam. Are you get what I'm saying? Eve was made from the side of Adam. But the new creation was not made from neither the rib or the side of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus, being both Lord and Savior, does all this for the new creation as part of his functions. Not the new creation doing this for him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, these things that we see, eh? are you getting what I'm saying? The reason why God made Eve from the side of Adam, and from the rib of Adam, made, 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 formed her from there, was because this was her purpose for him. But the new creation was not formed from the side of Adam, of, of Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why? Because this is not our purpose to him. It is not his purpose to us. Are you getting what I'm saying? As Lord and Savior. You know, so for those who have the opinion that a woman must call her husband Lord, she should also have Savior too. <laughs> because Jesus cannot be your Lord until you first become your Savior. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> He's the Savior of the body. So if you say she should call you Lord, also as Savior. And if she's calling you Lord and Savior, just know that she will not perform these roles to you. You'll be the one performing it to her. And my brother, one day you realize what it means. And Jesus was shouting this thing. You will soon shout it this thing. <laughs> and if you see you shout it, I'll finish. I can't make it. Alright. Praise God for more. Amen. Yeah, so Jesus does this for us. The, the, the church, does not, his bride does not do this for him. He does it for the bride. But for the woman, she does this for her, for her man. Are you getting what I'm saying? God created it like that. Amen. And the reason why God created it like that is so that the man will know that I am not Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the man will know that I am not Lord and Master. I am not Lord and Savior. He never called Adam Lord. The man, the man is not Lord and Master. He is not Lord and Savior. He is husband. She is wife. He needs her seriously for protection. For for respiration, for even muscle formation. Maybe that's the life where he needs muscle. <laughs> he needs how to form, to form muscle. A man of God saying he was just going about ministry. And his wife was the one taking care of the children. All the children are successful today. His own was ministry. <laughs> his own was just ministry. Can I, can, muscle formation. Can I tell him? Can I tell him his wife was in the background? We never heard about her name. We don't know about it, but that man was not there too. He said that whenever, whenever he wants to get confirmation of what God is telling him, he will ask his wife, um, not directly. Say, oh, are you really hearing anything concerning? And he says, when as he asks her, she will tell him exactly what he was he has been hearing. This is okay, fine, now clear. So even the let me what the spiritual penetration. Needed confirmation for that. My brother, my sister, most information. The two children, he was coasting the whole America evangelistically, preaching everywhere, preaching everywhere. It was the woman who had no time for the children. Who can say today that the ones, uh, Kenneth W. Hagin, is the one who is a pastor in the ministry also. Most information. If all Hagin did was to just say I'm the Alpha and Omega, who will continue the work today? Most information, sir. We need it. A man, she's a woman. She she do, does her purpose. I, I do my purpose. If you want to do her purpose, plus your purpose, you will soon shout. It's finished. I'm finished. Not this finished. I'm finished. <laughs> Amen. All right. But in the case of the first Adam, God opened the side to remove the, his Adam's physical rib to form the woman. In the case of the last Adam, that's Jesus Christ. A physical rib was not taken from Jesus to form his wife because his wife, that is the new creature, was and is not physical but spiritual. Now, God took a rib from the first Adam because he had to form a physical being called Eve to give to him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So he needed a physical raw material to create a physical being. But for Jesus, God did not need any physical raw material to create the new creature because the new creature was not a physical being. It's not a physical being. The new creature is a spiritual being. 
You only need the physical raw material when you are dealing with the physical creation. But when you are dealing with the spiritual creation, what do you need the physical raw material for? Are you going to say? This was why a soldier opened the space between two of Jesus' ribs for his wife to be born. Are you going to say? With his spear, he pierced it, he opened it for the wife to be born. Now, what is very rare? God was the one who wanted to remove the rib. In Adam, first Adam's case. In this last Adam, who would have come to remove it from Jesus? Is this so just? Are you going to say? And so, since it has nothing to do, in the first Adam, God did it because it was all physical. In the last Adam, it has nothing to do with physical. So, God had to what? Only use the, the, the um, physical assistance of the soldiers to what? Allow the what? The blessing of the what? Of the church. So, it will amaze you to know that the midwife for the birth of the church was a Roman soldier. <laughs> the midwife for the birth of the new creation was a Roman soldier. So, my brother, when it looks like it, it did not, the midwife is, I know the funny thing, when women give birth, you know what the midwife do now? Some of them could be very troublesome. And the, 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 the some of them, the, the, the southern gynecologists could also have to um, uh, inflict cuts, is that not so? For, for it to come. That was what happened. The, the gynecologists will have to inflict cuts for the baby to come. Same way the, 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 the soldier had to inflict a cut on Jesus for the what? For the church to emerge, for the new creature to emerge. Now, so the question is this oh, why a soldier? Question, can you remember some of you that are giving birth? Can you remember the, the doctor that delivered you? Some of them were not even nice doctors there. Are you going to say? And number two, why a soldier? It makes us understand that when the things that came again, it's called the soldiers were the ones who crucified him. They were the ones who tortured him. And yes, they were the ones who better the church. It makes us know that it's affliction that bets the church. In the form of affliction, that means that we better it. So when the challenge is, when, the, when, when it looks like the whole of hell is coming against us, ah, something is about being born to the soldier. I don't want to stay there because that's not the focus. That's not where we are supposed to stay on. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Now, so this was why a soldier opened the space between two of Jesus' ribs for his wife to be born. First, death aided by a rib. You can say that again. Death aided by a rib. For the first Adam, the rib aided the death as a raw material with which God created the physical being called Eve. For the last Adam, the rib aided the death as the canal from which the new creature was born. So without the rib, there will be no death of both the first wife, or the wife of the first Adam, and the wife of the last Adam. Unlike the first Adam, the only physical things that were seen when the side of Jesus was opened were what? Blood and water. Which are the two means of cleansing? Are we together? And in every birth process, these two things also come out. Blood water comes out first to show that the baby is ready to come. And then blood comes out of the baby's hand also. Those are physical things that show birth. But number two, more important is that they are the two they are the two spiritual means of cleansing. Blood washes away the sinner, the sin of the sinner. Are we together? And water continuously washes the sins. Blood washes away the sin of the sinner. And what? Water continuously washes the sin. Romans 1 verse, Revelation 1 verse 5. It says, And from Jesus, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins, in his own blood. And we together. Blood washed our sins. Blood is for the washing of sin. Now say without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Now that almost everything is purged with blood. And then Ephesians 5 verse 26 it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So now the blood is for the sinner. The what the water is for the saints. That's what does that imply? Once you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, you do not need the blood wash again. The blood wash is basically for you when you were a sinner. It washed away your sin. And the Bible says your sins have been forgotten in the what? In the pool of the blood. Forgotten. 
for, forgot it. And the Bible says your sins and knowledge you do not remember anymore. Once you've been translated from being a sinner to becoming a saint, you don't need the blood wash again. Now, so when we hear new creations say, I wash myself the blood of Jesus, what are you washing again? That day, you were washed already. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, what you now need as a new creature is what? Continuous washing of the water, which is the word of God. So you need more water into your system. Wash your mind with the word. That the Bible says, be not compulsory, but be not transformed by the read of your mind. That it may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect in God. Renew your mind by the word. Renew your mind. It's a sinner that needs the blood to wash his sin. You don't wash yourself with your, with your blood again after you have been brought, washed with the blood. No, you wash yourself with the word. Keep taking in the word. Keep saturating yourself with the word. It washes up the spots and the wrinkles. For the sinner, it is sin that is washed off the nature of sin. For the new creature, it is spots and wrinkles that is dealt with by the word. So it washes off spots and wrinkles. Are we together? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen and amen. Alright. These two cleansing means these two cleansing means are also seen in the breath of a baby. Is that also? The water breaks and then the blood comes out as the baby comes. These also, from physical standpoint, made us understand that a person was born from the side of Jesus. Aside their spiritual understand and um, purpose, the two of them coming out also made us know that what a person was what born from what the side of Jesus. That means there was a death. But the beautiful thing about it is that this person was not seen. Although blood and water were seen, this was because this person was a spirit called a new creature. So he was born. He was not, so when the, when the soldier pierced it, the soldier only saw blood and water. But if there were to be any man of the spirit there, he would have seen the new creature come out. <laughs> but you know, even that time, Peter was far. John was close by. Peter was far. But even John was more carried away with all his master. So he couldn't see the new creature. Ah, even Mary, ah, let's not even go there, sir. Oh, she was already, she was almost gone. She had gone, in fact. So they couldn't see the new creature. But you know what? You know what? The father saw the new creature come out. That was when the new creature came out. Are we together? From the preceding, we understand that the new creature is a spirit whose life is the Holy Spirit. A spirit whose life is the Holy Spirit. That is the life of the new creature. He's a spirit whose life is the Holy Spirit. See, let me say that you are double spirit. Hey! You, you can't kill a double spirit. Before I used to say, can you kill a spirit? But now, this one I'm going to understand, you cannot kill a double spirit. And the spirit with the spirit life. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the spirit life. Number two, the new creature is a spirit living in and by the life of the Holy Spirit. We are defining who the new creature is now. <laughs> Number three, a new creature is a spirit living the life owned and led by the Holy Spirit. We saw as many are led by the Spirit of God as sons of God. Number four, the new creation is a living spirit only because he's living the life of the Holy Spirit. He's a living spirit only because what? He's living the life of the Holy Spirit. See, this is... I pray that everyone who hears this we have revelation on his own. Holy Spirit, only you can interpret this. Because I am only doing the work of a microphone. You are the one who can bet this revelation inside the heart of man. You are the one who can make us understand this in the fullness of it. And then we we'll begin to speak like Jesus. I have power to, to both lay down my life and pick it up. You cannot take my breath. It's not just because of prophecy, but because I know who I am. <laughs> it will make us begin to live the spirit life here on earth, and people begin to wonder what kind of people are these. Oh, there is a coming, a move of God, where the new creature will understand in fullness who they are. And then, number five, the new creature is a spirit living the spirit. Is a spirit. Open your mouth and just pray in the language of the Spirit for a little while. Zing da kush kibra ikos kibra. Now 
Now is your moment of salvation. If you are yet to make the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and personal Savior, we request that you say this prayer along with many others now. Say this words, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, I repent of my sins, and ask that you forgive my sins. I believe that you shed your blood on the cross, died for my sins, and rose again in the third day. Today, I invite you into my life today. Wash me by your blood, make me your own, and till eternity be my Lord and personal Savior, thank you Lord Jesus, in Jesus' precious name. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available, to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number, 033-154-551-2013. Swift code, M, B, G, H, G, H, A, C, to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana, you can send to account number, 033-254-551-2017. To give in Naira, you can send to, Ecobank Nigeria, account number, 5541020592 Also for further enquiries you can call us on +2334547932 OR send us an email via chimdiohahuna ministry at gmail.com Today remain ever blessed We believe you were blessed listening to this teaching from God's Word. May your soul remain ever refreshed and revived. We would love to hear your praise report today. Beloved, remain connected to Grace Life Comey Podcast. Jesus is Lord.